Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Holden Hardman and I am the Pop Culture Christian. Today we're looking at one of my absolute all-time favorite movies, Forrest Gump, and more specifically, the story of Lieutenant Dan Taylor. The man who had his heart set on his destiny, his honor. How he felt that God had ripped that away only to live the life of a drunken cripple and he could not make peace with his past. In this video, we're gonna see how God had even greater plans for Lieutenant Dan than he had for himself. And now he fought God every step of the way. We first meet Lieutenant Dan Taylor in the jungles of Vietnam as a battle-hardened soldier. Morning, sir! Oh, get your hands down. Do not salute me. There are goddamn snipers all around this area who love to grease an officer. Lieutenant Dan sure knew his stuff. I felt real lucky he was my lieutenant. He was from a long, great military tradition. Somebody in his family had fought and died in every single American war. I guess you could say he had a lot to live up to. As the movie progresses, Forrest Platoon is attacked in an ambush. Heeding Jenny's words, he runs from any kind of danger until he realizes that his best friend Bubba is still left behind. Bubba! He goes back with the intention of looking for him, but finds other soldiers along the way. So he grabs them, takes them to safety. Goes back looking for Bubba, grabs a new soldier, takes him to safety. He eventually comes to an extremely reluctant and outright defiant Lieutenant Dan. And Lieutenant Dan orders Forrest to just leave him alone, to let him die there. But Forrest refuses this order, picks him up anyway, and carries him to safety. To Lieutenant Dan, the greatest honor of his life was to die. He had his heart set on it, so anything less than that would leave him feeling unfulfilled. There are many times in my life where I feel like I have my heart set on something I really want, and then I don't get it. It becomes very easy at that point to become extremely bitter and resentful towards God. And in my case, maybe your case too, and certainly Lieutenant Dan's case, we can't see the greater plan for our lives amid our suffering. But not only did Lieutenant Dan lose his destiny, he also physically lost his legs. And we can see how much this situation affects him. We all have a destiny. Nothing just happens. It's all part of a plan. I should have died out there with my men, but now I'm nothing but a goddamn cripple. Lieutenant Dan here seems to already believe in some kind of higher power, some, some kind of higher calling. We all have a destiny. Nothing just happens. It's all part of a plan. Some of the most prudent atheists were once fervent believers in God. They had some kind of experience similar to what Lieutenant Dan had, some kind of trauma. And then they heavily denounced God after that. If there is no God, there is no plan. Lieutenant Dan just had bad luck and ultimately Better him than me, I suppose. Or, if he means what he says, and there is a higher purpose for his life, maybe he should consider that the higher plan, the higher purpose, was for him to not die in the jungles of Vietnam. I hear a lot about how Christians are a lot more emotion-based than they are logic-based, and how a lot of atheists are much more logic-based than they are emotion-based. However, you will find that a large number of atheists are indeed extremely emotion-based. Lieutenant Dan is a very emotion-based atheist that resents and hates the very notion of God. A good test to see if an atheist is emotion-based or logic-based is to ask this hypothetical question. If Christianity were true, hypothetically, would you choose to follow God? If they say, no, absolutely not, then it is not about logic, it is about emotion. Because a logical person will want to pursue and accept reality, pursue and accept the truth, even if they don't like it. To say no implies that there's more to the rejection of God than just logic. But many atheists hate to admit, and they will die on this hill, that there is no emotional factor for them rejecting God. And I'm not sitting here claiming that all of them do, but the truth is that many of them absolutely do. Lieutenant Dan Taylor here surely does. Do you know what it's like not to be able to use your legs? Well, yes, sir, I do. People that go through some kind of great trauma can be really resentful when they see joy in other people. What can be easy to miss, though, is that the people who are very joyful 
could have gone through something similar or even greater in terms of suffering than you. Forrest, for example, has every excuse in the book to be a very bitter man. He has a much lower IQ than all of his peers. He was bullied and picked on relentlessly all throughout school. The girl that he loves never chooses to love him back. He spent most of his adolescence unable to walk and he never had a father figure. And yet, he still finds God everywhere. He knows that God loves him. He doesn't allow the suffering in his life to destroy his spirit. So when Lieutenant Dan sarcastically asks if Forrest Gump knows what it's like to not be able to use his legs, and Forrest actually does know how that feels, Lieutenant Dan can't rationalize how Forrest is not as bitter as he is. There's a documentary called To Hell and Back, The Kane Hodder Story, about how stuntman and Jason Voorhees actor Kane Hodder experienced tremendous burns when doing a fire demonstration, where he gives his real-life experience with this very issue. I looked at somebody come in to visit the nursing staff. You have no idea what I'm going through, and you're fucking happy. I don't... I hated him. He pulls up his sleeve of his gown. He's got burn scars. He's a former patient. This guy does know what I went through, and he's happy? Maybe there's something positive that'll come out of this. He completely turned my whole attitude around. We often see our own struggle and pain as an outlier to the struggle and pain of other people. Nobody understands what I've been through. Nobody understands how hard my life has been. Maybe, maybe not but I guarantee you there are people that have had it way worse than you that still love God and know that God loves them. You have got to get rid of your main character syndrome that our culture cultivates because life is not about you. I promise you that you do not have it the worst out of anyone that has ever lived, even if you might feel like it sometimes. One of the best parts of seeing Lieutenant Dan is how Forrest interacts with him. Forrest never once treats him any differently after he loses his legs, because Forrest knows that the value of the man Lieutenant Dan Taylor is inconsequential to whether or not Lieutenant Dan has legs or not. And beyond that, whether Lieutenant Dan treats himself well or not. I had a destiny. I was supposed to die in the field with honor. That was my destiny, and you cheated me out of it. This wasn't supposed to happen. Not to me. I was Lieutenant Dan Taylor. You still Lieutenant Dan. When the war is over, we get to see what becomes of Lieutenant Dan. He becomes a drunk, bitter man that seems to go through life without a rudder. He's sleeping with hookers, he's doing nothing but alcohol and drugs, trying to fill that hole in his heart just to get him through to the next day. He is frustrated, he's depressed, and he's angry. More so, the very idea of becoming submissive to God, to him, is absolutely out of the question because he blames God for the situation that he's in. Have you found Jesus yet? No. I didn't know I was supposed to be looking for him, so. Come on, whether or not you're an atheist or a Christian, that was pretty funny. <laughs> That's all these cripples down at the VA. That's all they ever talk about. Jesus this, and Jesus that. <laughs> Have I found Jesus? They even had a priest. Come and talk to me. He said, God is listening, but I have to help myself. Now, if I accept Jesus into my heart, I'll get to walk beside him in the kingdom of heaven. Did you hear what I said? Walk beside him in the kingdom of heaven. Well, kiss my crippled ass. God is listening. What a crock of shit. I'm going to heaven, Lieutenant Dane. To Lieutenant Dan, the prospect of accepting Jesus into your heart is beneath him. It's something only the crippled veterans do, not somebody like him. He's better than that. And he mocks the very notion against God that he'll ever walk again, much less walk beside him in the kingdom of heaven. After Bubba dies, Forrest sets out to fulfill his promise to him that he would become a shrimp boat captain. And he enlists his good pal, Lieutenant Dan, to be his first mate. Lieutenant Dan, what are you doing here? Thought I'd try out my sea legs. Well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dane. Yes, I know that. And Forrest quickly realizes that he's not much of a shrimp boat captain. He cannot compete with all the other people that have been doing it probably for most of their lives. Well, maybe you should just pray for shrimp. I think you left the praying up to me. No shrimp. Where the hell's this god of yours? 
It's funny Lieutenant Dan said that, because right then, God showed up. I was scared, but Lieutenant Dan, he was mad. Come on! You call this a storm? It's time for a showdown! You and me, I'm right here! I think this experience was one of the best things that could have happened for Lieutenant Dan. And it was probably the only time he ever prayed to God directly. Previously, he was just mad at God, complained about God. But here, he talks to God. Black. He yells to God. God is ever present and he wants to hear from us. So whether or not you're angry with him or your frustration, it is acceptable for you to let God know that. Complain to God, tell God what bothers you, what upsets you, and then leave it with him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Despite your anger, God is your father and your friend, and he will not abandon you, even if you feel abandoned. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Accept and understand that God has greater things in store for you than you have in store for yourself. Understand that no matter how much you fight or you squirm or you complain, that God will not bend to your will. You must submit yourself to God's will. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Forest is like this. No matter what life throws at him, he's always the same joyful man. Whether he's enduring four miserable months in the jungles of Vietnam, or he's becoming a multimillionaire with his Bubba Gump shrimp company, he's content either way. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. There's a lot of lessons to learn from Forrest Gump, and this one is up there. As for Lieutenant Dan. Forrest, I never thanked you for saving my life. He never actually said so, but I think he made his peace with God. Lieutenant Dan takes over most of the operations for Bubba Gump Shrimp and even invests Forrest in some other companies like Apple, which makes both of them extremely wealthy men. In the future, we do get to see Lieutenant Dan once again. Only this time, he's walking towards Forrest. Lieutenant Dan. Hello, Forrest. You got new legs. New legs. Custom made. Titanium alloy. This is my fiance, Susan. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan. The man who should have died in the jungles of Vietnam, who thought the greatest thing his life could ever achieve was dying in the mud, in the filth, as a soldier, who became lost, angry, and bitter, and rejected the very idea of accepting Christ into his heart, or that he would ever walk beside God in the kingdom of heaven, walks up to Forrest in a new suit with a beautiful bride-to-be. God had greater plans for Lieutenant Dan Taylor than he had for himself. So even if you think you know what's best for your life, if you're angry that things are not going your way, make your peace with God, trust in his plans for your life, and they will be greater than anything you had previously set your heart on. I'm the Pop Culture Christian. Thank you all so much for watching.